G'day guys, welcome back. Too many projects, not enough time. Here we are on the floor of the shop today. I'm Andrew and um, thanks for coming along, taking the time. Today I'm going to explain basically from the front of the fan to the um, to the e-brake or handbrake on the back of the transfer case and everything in between and how it all fits together. So starting at the front with the fan as I mentioned, I'm probably going to run a thermo fan rather than the mechanical fan. And then moving back from there, I'm going to start a little further back to explain the front. So this engine is a 4.6 litre Rover V8 out of a 2002 Range Rover. And it, I originally got this motor and then installed it into my Range Rover Classic, my 93, uh, which most of the suspension parts on this truck are coming out of, although not the air suspension. Um, when I blew my uh, 4.2 litre up, I did go to the 4.6, which did cause some changes to happen. Um, at the time, we did convert the 4.6 serpentine belt system to a V-belt. And the biggest change of all was we converted it from coil packs or the electronic ignition system uh, computerized to a distributor. So we are running a cam in this with the distributor um, gearing on the front of it so we can drive a distributor. Now with switch, starting back from the front there, we have switched back to a serpentine belt system to save room because we don't have a lot of room in this truck for the V8. Um, so to shorten the front up by a couple of inches even, uh, we've gone to the serpentine belt system and in doing so, there was only a year or two at the most that had serpentine belt system and the distributor. Now this rare bit of nugget here is the timing chain cover and um, oil pump and also in the very top here right there is where the distributor goes in. Uh, this one came off a 95 Discovery um, so there was only really a year or two that these existed with this being drilled out. The casting on most of them um, was there, but this was blocked off because they didn't have distributors. So this, uh, this is a bit of a rare nugget to get a hold of. So we are running a distributor, and um, this brings us into the serpentine belt system. And then moving back from there, this bracket here is also another hard to find bracket for the alternator. Um, and then everything else is kind of standard, just a standard water pump, um, standard power steering pump on the other side here. Then moving back from there, we get into the engine, uh, which has had the heads just ported a little bit. And then the valve covers are old school 3.5 valve covers, the old ones, uh, just for that nostalgia look. And they do fit on with no clearance problems. I do have currently on here a twin SU intake manifold. Um, some say it's a little underrated for a 4.6, it'll struggle a little bit. So to get around that, I got this little nugget, which is a quad SU boxer intake manifold. A little more performance orientated, a lot more performance orientated. So, we're going to be rebuilding this and um, using this on there. Now, as for the SUs, they are hard to tune, hard to keep tuned. Um, they are a beautiful, amazing um, carburetor though. Uh, they are uh, great at working off camber at all sorts of different angles, this particular model. And... Um, I, I just love that nostalgia look and having four of them, it should go well. Now I am looking into trying to research um, EFI SU units. They do exist, they are expensive and, and uh, I'm just waiting for technology to move along a little bit through the project before I get slightly more serious. If not, we'll just get the regular ones uh, rebuilt and see how that does. And then, uh, so moving to the back of the engine, we, the flywheel itself came off a Discovery 2, a manual Discovery 2 uh, flywheel, manual flywheel. Um, 
So once again, not a lot of them around, so it was a little hard to come by, but I managed to come by one. The pressure plate is a standard um, Land Rover pressure plate. Now, if you're really interested in any of the part numbers for any of these, I can certainly do my best to find them for you. Just message below in the comments um, what part numbers you're looking at for any of these parts if you're doing a build like this, or even trying to fit this kind of setup, at least the engine-wise, into an MG or a, or a um, English or European sports car. And I will try and help you with that as well. So the clutch itself is also a 10 spline Land Rover clutch. And then moving back from behind there on the front of the uh, gearbox, that is a bell housing of a 1962-63 manual um, Buick Skylark which originally, in 62-63, the Buick Skylark in America had the 3.5 litre V8 Land Rover engine as we know it now. And then Land Rover bought it off Buick and started using it for all the Land Rover uh, V8s. So that bell housing is off a of Buick 1962 Skylark, I believe. 62-63 Skylark. Uh, once again, rare, hard to come by. And um, I was very lucky to find that one. And then that bolts to North American 3 and 4 speed gearboxes. Um, so I have it bolted with a quarter inch spacer um, so that the, the shaft um, doesn't bottom out in the back of the crank. Uh, so it's a quarter inch spacer there. Then the gearbox I'm using is a, is a Chevy SM465 10 spline four wheel drive gearbox. All those pieces are very important. Um, ten spline because it fits, happens to fit the clutch and other configurations to do with the next step as well. So the gearbox was, I believe, rebuilt from the guy I bought it from. He was going to put it in a big Chevy monster truck. They are a big, heavy, heavy gearbox. Granny first speed. Um, they are big and chunky and heavy and clunky, but it is a series truck, so I'm not that bothered by it because they were clunky gearboxes in a series truck anyway. Um, and the main reason for doing all of this is to get all this package as short as possible because I wanted the longest rear tail shaft, drive shaft that I could. And after all this setup, I still managed to get a 21 and a half, I think, drive shaft length in the back, which is amazing. Uh, so moving back from the, um, the Chevy SM465, uh, this shiny bit in the middle here is an adapter from Advance Adapters in California. Now it adapts the Chevy SM465, pardon me, to the series transfer case, and this is the series one transfer case that came out of Ivy in the bushes there. I've torn it apart a little bit, and it looks like the day it came off the... Uh, off the floor there, off the manufacturing floor. It looks great inside, like it's barely done any work at all. Uh, these transfer cases are extremely strong and robust and tough. Um, so it will be more than strong enough to put up with this V8. Not that this is a high horsepower V8, it's just a Rover V8. Uh, 4.6 liter though, um, so it is more, more than strong enough to put up with all the abuse that this engine is going to give it. And on the very back there, not there right now, but I will be looking into putting a disc brake, e-brake or handbrake on the very back of that transfer case as my e-brake instead of the drum style one, which gets full of oil and all those sort of problems too. Um, one other thing that I'm doing because with the transfer case is because this gearbox here is a granny first and not the highest ratio gearbox and I do have a nice bit of welly and power with this V8 that I am switching the middle gears to high ratio gears in the transfer case. I already ordered them, I waited, or waited since the beginning of the build for them to become available and then as soon as they became available I ordered them, they arrived within a couple of days from the UK, I was amazed, it was awesome, they were the wrong ones. They were the standard ratio ones they sent me. Big apologies. 
and um, they said we'll get them right out to you, which we're coming up, by the time I get them will be four months later, um, but they are coming. So we are upgrading the uh, center gearing on the transfer case to a high ratio gear set, uh, and I'll be able to scoot down the highway a little faster and a little better with that gear set in there. Uh, I'm doing that instead of an overdrive because the overdrive just seems to be just a whole nother bag of worms um, of things to go wrong in gearing and more power loss um, through, through, through the overdrive. Whichever overdrive, there's a couple available. I'm not necessarily going to name them, but there are a couple of overdrives available for the Land Rovers. Uh, avoiding them, going with a high ratio gear set, done and dusted one less lever and so I got plenty of power to push it down the road anyway so uh, I don't need to be changing gears in between um, overdrives and all that sort of stuff too um, and that's pretty much um, engine gearbox transmission uh, transfer case everything how it works now the clutch fork I have one right there it is a Chevy one seeing as though it is a Chevy gearbox. So I do have the um, correct Chevy throw it bearing coming. Uh, we'll see how that adjusts up. We'll cover that in another video when I install and test all that. And then the other thing is just to get the right fork to actuate that. Now I was thinking about doing a hydraulic clutch throw out bearing. Um, it just seems like more work than is needed as well. So for ease of maintenance, I am going with a traditional clutch fork and um, external um, hydraulic clutch. Uh, all to come in the future. So thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video and see the update of the, uh, the lump that we're going to be putting in Ivy here and how it all came together and how it all fits together. And um, I, th <laughs> I think it's going to come together really well. It's amazing. We've got everything from a 1957 Series 1 um, to a 1970s Chevy gearbox, 1962-63 um, Buick bell housing, um, and then all the rest is Land Rover, but from different years. So the engine 2002, valve covers obviously from a lot earlier than that, They're the kind of the old retro looking ones. Um, the timing chain cover is from a 95 Discovery, and these other components, um, I think, uh, this is from the 93 Range Rover, so is the harmonic balancer, that bracket, I'm not sure what year that bracket comes off, the AC, the non-AC bracket, and um, I think the power steering pump also came off the 95 Discovery donor vehicle as well. Um, so yeah, thanks very much for coming along, remember to like and subscribe, and um, we'll see you next time around.